what made you sort of get into this sort of thing that is crypto uh, zoology? First of all, I guess we should define what what that is exactly. What what does that mean to somebody saying that? Well, it, it's sort of a a default title for somebody who researches unproven animals. Uh, you know, most well-known like Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, yeah. Mothman. There's a lot of these creatures that people report sightings, but there's no definitive proof to say they do or don't exist. So, you know, I, growing up in Texas, I was exposed to a lot of legends, even some of them local, like the Lake Worth Monster, uh, just close to Fort Worth, which was said to be this sort of white, hairy, goat man, sas Sasquatch type creature. Um, oh, really? The Legend of Boggy oh, wow. Creek, which was a famous movie and creature said to live in southern Arkansas, just across near Texarkana. Um, okay. It was a Sasquatch yeah. creature. I was looking at that one online. Um, East Texas, believe it or not, has a lot of Bigfoot sightings. So I, my, oh, my really? father was a hunter. So I was kind of big into that rural outdoors life. And as a kid, I just loved monsters, monster movies. And then I, you know, when I heard of Bigfoot, I thought, oh my gosh, you know, something like that could be in the woods. You think, do you think Bigfoot is the, is the most well-known like of them, oh, of all yeah, of them? Or what do you think? Yeah. Bigfoot, Bigfoot, you know, which most people think lives in the Pacific Northwest, but with the TV shows and stuff now, obviously people are aware there's sightings of these type creatures everywhere. So yeah, I was just enamored with this stuff as a kid. And I, I became a musician and a slash writer. And I remember it being in tour buses and stuff and I'd be reading Bigfoot books or whatever. And, yeah. You know, just following, learning about just the whole phenomenon of people seeing a creature that, you know, may or may not exist in the woods. So it just oh, it's exciting. Yeah. I, I mean, that stuff's exciting. Who is not interested in that? That stuff draws in big number, right? I mean, you mentioned Bigfoot. I mean, no matter what, where you stand on or whatever you believe, you still, the conversation is still uh, inviting and sort of contagious and um, any sort of new discovery or whatever. It just sort of makes you think about it a little bit more, you know, the what if uh, possibility, you know what I mean? Because you can't ever discount it. It's hard to really just disprove forever. Right. So it, it, the, 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 the sort of lore or legend can sort of live on forever. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's sort of exciting. It's just one of those things. That you, I mean, if you just look at, you know, cable network TV, how many shows on there are covering things like Bigfoot, Mothman, Lake Monster, Monsters, it goes yeah. on and on. So there, there's a definite interest in it. Just whether you, whether you totally believe or whether you're just like, wow, what is it these people are saying they saw? That's me. That's where I'm at. I'm just, I'm open. I'm open to the idea. I'm open to anything, to be honest with you. know what I mean? I mean, that's just the truth. I'm open to it, of course. I mean, it doesn't sound that far-fetched, the idea of a Bigfoot or a community of Bigfoots, right? Like, you know, uh, that, that's, that sounds pl totally plausible. Um, the, the only thing I guess, you know, we can, this is where I'd like to dive in. What, what are some of the biggest, um, hurdles, right. Or, or questions you get that go against it. Right. I guess the big one would be, why haven't we found them yet? Right. Like we're sort of all over the planet. We're sort of, we got camera, we got, why wouldn't we have some sort of definitive evidence by now? But they also said the same thing about aliens and look where we're headed down that road right now, you know? So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, 120 years ago, people discounted sightings of uh, mount gorillas. But, you know, we know that those exist. There's pockets of things. There's a lot of forestry and swamps. And the short answer is that certainly you would think by now we'd have a, a really good picture or some a body or bones. But if you think about how few of these creatures there may be, yeah, um, it's hard. I mean, if you're in Washington state and there's 30,000 bears, you know, how many times do you run across a, a dead bear? No, hardly ever, if, if at all. And there could be a surviving population of these things, 250 or 300 of them uh, scattered yeah. about. I mean, 
what are the chances you're going to run across one of those, especially if we presume they are of a higher intelligence and maybe try to avoid people or bury their dead or, you know, try to exactly. stay elusive. So it's, it's not yeah. totally impossible. And what keeps me engaged is just when I think, ah, this, this, this can't be, I'll meet a perfectly credible, smart individual who ran across something in clear daylight that they can't explain. And I know they're not lying. They just were there in a particular right place at the right time. When I interview those, I'm like, man, I don't know. They, they saw totally. something. I, I t dude, I get that a hundred percent, man. Like I get it a hundred percent. That's really what reels me in as well is, is true testimony, right? From people and reputable people, right? You think, why would this person even make, you know what I mean? Uh, what, what's the, like, what's the craziest story you've ever heard or, you know what I mean? About Bigfoot, uh, that you thought, wow, or the most reliable or credible, whatever you think, you know, whatever you think would be cool. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of uh, varied ones, you know, scary ones, a hunter sees one attack hogs. One of the most credible ones was a guy who people in, in the small town of Falk, Arkansas, just, just above Texas, uh, people said, yo, you got to talk to this guy. He saw something when he was younger and he doesn't like to talk about it. He, he's a very honest guy. And I finally persuaded him to have a conversation with me. And he even took me to the property where he had this incident. But when he was a teenager, uh, they lived on this property near where a lot of sightings of Sasquatch-like creatures have been reported. He was out there late one evening fishing on their private pond, and he heard something kind of walking in the leaves. It was late February, a lot of leaf litter. He heard something crunching around. He thought, uh, it, it sounds big. It could be the neighbor's bull got out or something, you know, because no persons would be really trespassing through there. It was private land. It's kind of uh, remote. And he said, all of a sudden, he looked up and he saw this ape-like creature which stood upright walked on two legs was about between six and seven feet tall walk over an embankment it was walking and did not see him because he's sitting in the boat quiet because he's fishing the thing just walked up and it was about 60 feet from him it walked up and over an embankment and disappeared and of course this guy just you know, was frightened beyond measure. I mean, to look at something yeah. like that and to realize it's not a person, it's not a person in a suit, it's some kind of animal. I mean, this guy just, you know, freaked out, rode to the edge of the uh, pond. And when he made noise, the steps stopped. And at that oh, point, Jesus. he got out and he heard the oh, thing man. take off running and he took off running for the house. But uh, Hell yeah, I would have taken off running. Are you kidding me? Hell yeah. Uh, I just oh felt man. I got to know this individual. And I mean, he's, he's definitely not making this up. Uh, he's very credible. He's just an, a normal guy, has a family, yeah. takes his kids to baseball games. Just no reason to make this up. And he wasn't seeking publicity. So those are the accounts where I'm like, man, I don't know how to explain what he saw, but he definitely saw something that doesn't fit in our known you know box yeah dude and how many people you think don't say something because right they just say oh people are going to make fun of it right or whatever they're just the story stays with them right oh absolutely um, you got to figure that most people don't say anything what are they going to do call yeah. the news the papers you know I, yeah. <laughs> if somebody comes in my house like the cable repair guy or some they see monsters and bigfoot stuff around and first they're like what are you into this? You know, they're kind of standoffish, <laughs> but about five minutes later, well, I don't believe in this, but you know, one time I was in the woods and exactly you know, weird thing. And you're like, there you go. <laughs> totally. Absolutely. Oh man. Wow. What a crazy story. Absolutely. I would have been scared, frightened. There's no uh, doubt about it. And look, anyone who's been out like deep in the woods or camping or this and that just knows like, there's just things we don't have all the answers to. Right. I mean, look at the ocean, for instance. Right. Like we don't know everything that's going on in there. So I, I, I would even be yeah, pressed to say on land as well. We just don't know everything that's out there. And yeah, absolutely. The story, these testimonials of, of people. Those are the most 
uh, compelling uh, for sure. Have you personally ever had any experiences? I've never, you know, de definitively seen something that I would say was a cryptid, but there's been a couple of occasions when I was in areas that have a lot of sightings, one of those being in Arkansas, one of them in Florida, when I heard howls or something moving or something I was, one time something was hitting on a can in a really remote area of Florida in a national forest. And I tried to pursue it into the brush with a flashlight and whatever it was kept just one step ahead. It sounded like it was running on two legs. Didn't sound like, it definitely wasn't a deer. I don't think it was a hog and I don't think it was a bear, but I didn't actually see it. And, and in Arkansas, something following myself and another guy and howling at us. And this howl was just unearthly. It was spooky and scary. And, um, you know, again, I didn't see it, but and this all goes in context with when I write a book, I mean, I'm kind of like an investigative journalist. I've got to go to the areas where people said they saw whatever they saw so then I can get the full scope and bring the reader to that area. And so thusly, it's exciting. I can go into the woods and, and possibly experience something myself. That's what I'm talking about. That's how you do it. That's, I mean, that's it. Like, that's exciting uh, for sure. You know, what I'm, what I'm, when you're telling that story before, I don't know if anyone listening was thinking the same thing that I'm thinking. Why are you chasing these sounds into the deep forest in the dark with a flashlight? Are you not scared? Like, you know what I mean? You got a weapon with you? Like, I'd be frightened. Like, you know, are you thinking they're going to be on good terms? I mean, that's a question. What do you think Bigfoot's, you know, or any whatever is out there is going to be friendly, you know, to approach them in that way. I don't know. That's what I'd be thinking. Well, there, there's a lot of accounts where there's aggressive behavior. And I, I think, I mean, like any animal, some would be scared and run, or some would be curious and some would, you know, be territorial. I don't know. I just, I'm kind of crazy like that. I'll go and <laughs> I mean, we, we rode into swamps in the, in the middle of the midnight, Oh my miles God. from anybody with no lights it's kind of exhilarating wow. but I, i'm i'm kind of not scared there's been a few times where you know i realize what the hell am i doing you know i, I could be killed out here and no nobody would know <laughs> but in the interest of writing good books and you know making good interviews on documentaries or whatever i do i figure man if i get the chance to see something i better chase it down because you know, that might be sure. my only chance. And if I, as long as I don't die, it makes a good story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As long as you don't die.